can a light box for seasonal affective disorder damage your eyes? If you want to find out the answer, keep watching. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist. And on this channel, we talk about eye health, eye surgery, my life here in Hawaii, and a little bit of eye makeup health. So if any of that interests you, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you can follow along and get these videos as soon as I create them. All right, it is winter time, not so much here in Hawaii, but winter time in the rest of the country and Northern hemisphere. And for many people, that means a lack of light. And seasonal affective disorder is something that affects so many people. In fact, when my own husband moved from Hawaii to Boston, he was extremely affected by the lack of sunlight, the fact that the sun seems to set around 3.30 in the afternoon in Boston, and just the long darkness. It can be very soul crushing. Now, those light boxes, you've seen them all over the place and they have been proven to work. But do they damage your eyes? So these shifts in daytime hours, that could have varying consequences for people. It could just be the change in seasons, like I was talking about the winter time here in Boston versus Hawaii, or it might be when you travel. In any event, for some people, it just makes you feel like you have absolutely no energy. And for others, it is a lot more serious. So what do you look for in those SAD light boxes? First, it should at least be able to provide 10,000 lux of light. So lux is just the unit of measurement of how bright the light is. And the second key thing is that it should provide as little UV light as possible. Now, most of the commercially available SAD light boxes have very little UV light, but that's something to be really mindful of when you are looking to purchase an SAD light box, because some of them are not actually made for the express purpose of seasonal affective disorder, and which might mean it might not be that effective and it might have damaging UV rays. Typically what healthcare professionals recommend is that you use the light box within the first hour of waking up. It should be about 16 to 24 inches from your face and you should use it for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now some people will gradually titrate up starting at about 10 minutes and then going up to about 45 minutes. And here's the thing, you are supposed to have your eyes open but not directly licking into the light. Now these SAD light boxes, they are not approved by the FDA. So even though you can buy these light boxes, just if you Google search it and find something on Amazon, you don't need a prescription for it. But even though you can do that, it's really best to do it under the counsel of your healthcare professional. Your doctor might actually recommend a very specific light box. Unfortunately, most healthcare insurances don't cover it, but it has been shown to be effective. So let's get back to the question. Are they safe? If you are buying a commercial commercially available light SAD box, one that is made and created for seasonal affective disorder. It really should have very little UV light, if any at all. Almost all of them on the market that I have seen are UV free, which is great. So it means that you don't have to worry about the UV damage to the eyes. UV damage would cause things like a pinguecula, a pterygium, cataracts, even worsen macular degeneration. So there's a lot of things that can be caused from ultraviolet light onto the surface of the eye, especially when you're using it at very close distances. Eyelid cancers and even eye cancers are also possible. There's a host of different kinds of cancers that you can get on your eyelids and even inside your eye or on the surface of the eye. Squamous cell carcinoma of the eyelid, basal cell carcinoma of the eyelid, malignant melanoma. You can get conjunctival intraepithelial neoplasia, corneal neoplasia, and even melanoma inside the eye melanoma. So there's a lot of reasons you don't want unfiltered UV light directly into your face. Well, has this been studied? I was able to find a couple studies that looked at the eye health consequences of using a light SAD box. So there was a huge review of over 6,700 articles, and it looked at all of the ocular complaints from people who were using a light box for seasonal affective disorder. Now, as many as about 45% 
percent of the individuals it ranged so there was actually a range from zero to 45 percent of the patients who experienced some kind of ocular consequence whether it was just eye irritation or discomfort to something more serious but in all of the individual studies there was actually no association between the light therapy and the eye symptoms and there was absolutely no evidence for any ocular damage caused by light therapy except for one case of a patient who developed some macular issues and they were also on a medication that was known to make you more light sensitive so this is why it's really important if you are undergoing light therapy for seasonal affective disorder you must let your ophthalmologist know so that we can look for the things that might be of concern in this particular case it was an antidepressant it was clomipramine so Sometimes people don't realize that you need to tell us what you're on. They just think, oh, you're just eye doctors. You don't need to know my medicines. We absolutely do. It's really important. Another study looked at patients before and after they had been undergoing light therapy and they did eye exams on them, examining a bunch of different criteria. They looked at visual acuity, intraocular pressure, the examination at the slit lamp, and even dilated the eyes and checked the retinas with indirect ophthalmoscope. They did visual field tests, photographs of the inside of the eye, something called an Amsler grid test, which checks your macula. They did a sensory motor exam, checked pupils, contrast sensitivity, stereopsis, which is the ability for the two eyes to work together, and a macular stress test. So it's a lot of testing that they did, extremely comprehensive. And the results were they found no significant ocular changes after treatment with a light SAD box. And then they even looked at long-term treatment of 17 patients. And these are people that had an extensive amount of light therapy, ranging from 60 to 1,250 hours of light therapy. And they also found no evidence of any ocular disease. So that's really great. So if you have seasonal affective disorder, you can feel pretty comfortable that there's no documented negative consequences to your eyes of using them. Try not to stare directly at the light, that's always going to be helpful. But if you have a pre-existing eye condition, something like macular degeneration or cataracts or glaucoma or any type of eye cancer or even a mole on the eyelid or inside the eye called a nevi, you absolutely must let your ophthalmologist know so that we can check the eyes a little bit more frequently. Also let your doctor who is recommending the light treatment know about any and all medications that you're on because some medicines make you more light sensitive and then that can therefore cause a problem with the eyes. So all of your doctors need to know exactly what you're on so that they can best care for you. But feel confident that it is safe and it should not damage your eyes. At least no known case reports in the scientific literature. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful for you. I'm sorry that I can't bring you all to Hawaii to enjoy the sun 365 days a year. In fact, that is one of the main reasons we moved back to Hawaii from Boston because my husband really needed the sun to be able to just be happy and be his usual self. So short of that, I think those light SAD boxes should probably do the trick and know that they are probably not harmful to your eyes. If you've tried a light SAD box, I'd love to hear from you. Drop it in the comment below. And if you have any other topics you would like for me to discuss, their safety or their eye health consequences, drop those below too. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye-bye.